Christmas color. Back. I am back from a month away. Um, took a river cruise. Well, we'll see if this goes. So I'm back. Um, the stream started and then it stopped. So uh, anyway, um, I'm back after a month away. I know Nicole has been keeping you very well occupied with drawing dragons and a bunch of other things for the special show that they are going to be recording uh, for the holiday. What I'm going to be doing is trying to turn these, which are quite large, and these which are smaller, um, into icebergs and icicles. Um, and that will be for the special as well. So I've got this jar of white paint, and we'll see how far that goes. And when that runs out, I will be uh, using some Viejo white, and we'll just keep going until these things are covered. So you're going to put a base coat of white on these higher because they're pretty large so you'll be watching these kind of turn more or less white and then we're going to start doing some highlights in like light blue and maybe um we have this pearlescent white that might look kind of shiny on it kind of nice um yeah we'll see how it goes i haven't painted in a while and uh, i've been given the task of doing this because uh probably can't mess it up too much anyway the uh pigment has separated on this very nicely but we have this really good stirring mix it up well so this is dice and dungeons relaxing painting i think uh, many of you have joined in before and I will try to make it as relaxing as possible, which should be easy having been on vacation for a uh, River Cruise came back from Hamburg, Germany to New York. Well, that's an interesting effect. I hadn't noticed that before. When it vibrates, everything just kind of wavers, wiggles around. It's kind of well, this seems to have stirred things up pretty well. Um, so yeah, uh, I need to turn these uh, white. There's lots of nooks and crannies and crags and all sorts of things. So I'm going to be using this brush. Probably could use a little bigger brush maybe, but I need to get into all of that. And we'll just see how this covers. We we'll end up using up all of the white paint that we have. Um, we'll start putting it on this is a paint that in the past has not covered all that well but since we're going to be putting other colors on it also the idea is to just get it whitish we'll be using this until it is gone yeah the kind of unevenness of it Actually, the way it kind of puddles up and things, that, that actually might help the uh, the effect of all of this when it comes right down to it. So, we are spreading white paint. So, Dyson Dungeons is going to be preparing a holiday special, which I'm sure will be just as amazing as the Dead Hot Banner last Halloween, which uh, will be re-airing again. That was an amazing, amazing uh, adventure. If you didn't catch it last year, you definitely need to catch it this year. And uh, this holiday special, I'm sure, will be pretty amazing as well. I know almost nothing about it. It's been, uh, been prepared while we were on vacation, so... I'll be discovering it along with everybody else. 
I do understand, though, that it has dragons in it. Because Nikki had been preparing a lot of dragons, dragon drawings, uh, relaxing painting, but it was drawing over the last several weeks while we were gone. It looks like this, this paint is uh, is working out. It's not... We got a lot of this covered already, and it probably will be enough. If not, we've got a couple of bottles of the white. So what I'm going to try to do is get these big ones, there's three of them, in the same uniform kind of color. This white color. And then if this runs out, this happens, oh, that's nice, that's going to look really good. I could get, you know how icebergs, uh, glaciers and things have that kind of like bluish color? I'm going to try to get that in there. So. On, this, on the on the face of this, That's, that would be pretty nice if I could pull that off. Oh well, yeah, got uh, got to sail down the Rhine River. Visited Strasbourg and Basel and uh, Lake Lucerne and then spent some time in Berlin and Berlin's a really cool city and then uh, Hamburg where we left uh, the ship and we sailed back home instead of flying which is really nice because when you're retired if you've got as I like to say if you've got seven days instead of seven hours Food's a lot better on the ship than it is on the plane, I'll tell you that. And the uh, very, very nice mattresses are way better than the seats that you get on the plane. And you don't get jet lag because uh, the way it sails is that the time changes one hour every day. And in this case, coming back across from Europe, Basically, you're getting an extra hour of sleep every day, too, because you fall back. So that's pretty nice. Anyway, it was a very nice trip. But now I'm back, and I am uh, relaxing with this white paint. And this is, this is the part I can't mess up before I start trying to do highlights. We've got a light blue. We also have these pearlescent colors. And what I'm going to do at some point, probably near the end, is use the pearlescent as highlights. Because uh, it'll just kind of make it a little sparkly. Shiny and sparkly. And it, if I put it on thin enough, it will... Um, the, blue high, the blue that I eventually will put on this will show through. And in fact, at some point, what I'm going to do, we have some, some really nice, like, aquamarine colors that are way too dark otherwise for ice. But I'm hoping that if I put some of that on, because it's a really pretty color, and then put the pearlescent white over it, I'll try it at some point here. Put the pearlescent over it, that it will look like the ice that you see in glaciers. Just uh, painting everything this nice white color. It'd be a pretty decent undercoat. Brush is working pretty well. It's it's uh, it holds enough paint to get get going, and it's uh, small enough 
to get into most of the crannies and nooks, um, which is important because there's a lot of them in this very rough surface. It doesn't hold so much paint that you just end up wasting it. Just checking around. Seeing it quickly. He said, I'll have plenty of time to mess around with. Uh, Trying to make it look icy a little bit later on. Yeah, so speaking of icebergs, we learned two, there are a couple of things on the cruise that were kind of interesting way back. One is that on the map, they have a map that shows the ship's position all the time. And it kind of cycles through and you can actually see the, the location of ships that are near you. Like when we were in the English chant, it was just full of ships all over the place. We were shipping. Yep. Surprisingly close to Newfoundland. I didn't realize it was actually that, that they had almost made it. They, they go out of their way to pinpoint the location of the Titanic, you know, because you're on a ship crossing the Atlantic in October. What you really want to know for sure is where this other ship sank. So that was always present. And then we heard this lecture about from the guy who actually designed the ship, the, the Queen Mary II. And he said that the Queen Mary II almost did not ever get built because people were no longer taking ships across the Atlantic. They were, you know, flying and uh, they didn't didn't have didn't take the time didn't want to spend the time seven days um on a ship getting from europe to north america or vice versa until the film titanic came out and that for some reason people watching a film about an ocean liner sinking in the north atlantic greatly increased the amount of interest in taking a ocean liner across the ocean in the North Atlantic, which, you know, that's what you want to do is, oh yeah, I just read about a car crash. Let's go get in a car and, you know, it's not usually the, the kind of thing that incentivizes people, but apparently uh, an ocean liner sinking was a big incentive to get on an ocean liner. And that if it, he said that if it hadn't been actually for that film, they probably never would have built the Queen Mary because there wasn't enough interest in crossing. Anyway, the, the ship was full. It was really, they had, they had no trouble getting people to sail. And what else? Oh yeah, um, there's a kennel on the ship. It holds something like 20 animals, 20, 24 cats and dogs. And um, the kennel is actually the hardest thing on the ship to book. They have, I don't know, like a couple dozen crossings a year. They sail every week, basically, um, through most of the year. Um, but uh, the kennels are all booked all the way through 2024. So if you want to take your dog or cat on the Queen Mary with you, you can't do it until 2025, unless you find somebody who already has booked a kennel and uh, you might buy it from them or, or something. So yeah, um, animal space is hard to come by. Um, in the Queen Mary, you can. It's easier to, to like book the owner suite or whatever. You know, the most expensive suite. It's easier to book that than it is to get a place for your dog. 
so keep that in mind in case you want to be taking your dog across the Atlantic on the ship. You need to plan way in advance. Okay, well, second one is coming along okay, too. And the white, yeah, you'll see it in a bit. I'll show you. the. It's almost dry enough to, like, pick up again. The, the white undercoat is actually looking pretty decent. And I think when I'm done with all of this, there'll probably still be enough paint left so that if the highlighting, the blue highlighting, turns out to be not very good, um, I'll be able to paint over it again. I'm going to have to experiment with a couple of things, you know, especially with the blues, because the blues are pretty saturated colors, and on ice they're, they're kind of translucent, is that I'm going to find a couple of blue colors. Maybe I'll just do this on a piece of paper, as opposed to uh, on, on this model first. Is, you know, depending on how this comes along, either before or after the break, is I'll get some blues out and get some cardboard paper, some stiffer paper, and um, put a white undercoat on it, and then put some of the blues on. It's kind of in either dry brushing, so it's really pretty thin, or uh, maybe just painting it on, and then doing an overcoat in like this white color or the pearlescent white to see how it looks. These are big enough I can get my hand inside of them to hold it, which is good because otherwise I'd be getting white paint all over it myself. Oh, oh yeah, I can do a flip. Didn't see that anybody was in chat until just now, so, um, you know. I didn't want to waste a flip. Oh, I didn't, you know, just saying how I could do this without getting paint all over my hands. Um, and then I got too much paint on the brush and... So as soon as I'm done with this, uh, this Rocky Bird thing, yeah. Okay. But what I have here is like a, a filament string. Not natural to icebergs. That it doesn't show later. It's the kind of thing that actually might show up. I who do a better flip. I haven't done a flip at all. So whatever I do will be better than the one I haven't done. We're getting close to finishing this up, so when, it, when it's done, then I'll flip something.
Okay, well. Mm, yeah. So that's the one I painted earlier. That actually looks pretty decent. Okay, it'll look even better with some blue highlights and then some some over over painting with uh, a white or fluorescent on top of it. So I'm gonna push this in. Okay. Here's the last of the big ones. Um, what shall I flip? I'm gonna flip the top of the paint box. Ready? That was the better flip. Okay. So on our vacation, we had just absolutely beautiful weather. It rained. These are the times it rained. It rained the first day we arrived. So when we got to the hotel, it was raining, but that was at night. And all we needed to do was unpack and have dinner. So it didn't interfere with anything. And then um, it rained twice on the rest of our trip and both times it rained while we were in a restaurant eating so we sat got in and started to eat and it started to rain and when we were done it had stopped so it was it was pretty amazing uh, the temperature it was actually kind of cool the whole time um, probably in Fahrenheit, like around the high 50s, low 60s maybe. So it was it was comfortable walking around with a sweater and sometimes a light jacket. Well, it did it did rain in the North Atlantic when we were on the uh, on the Queen Mary, but you know, other than not being able to walk around deck or the balcony for a day or two out of the, the time we were on it. It really didn't interfere with anything because uh, the ship was designed for the North Atlantic and the North Atlantic is usually pretty crappy in terms of weather. So it was designed to have a lot of things going on inside, a lot of public spaces and areas where you could just sort of go and hang out. Um, quite a few bars that wasn't a surprise was it but they also have a beautiful library gorgeous library with all sorts of big wooden mahogany bookcases and like 10,000 books or something it's quite a significant library that was cool there's a planetarium on the ship and that was fun did you like that flip? great yeah, maybe I'll do it again later. Before I bottle paint. This is actually working out pretty well. You know, if wanted, if you just wanted that to be like a craggy mountain, just even with the primer on it, it looks pretty good. And then you could have like these glaciers that that come down on it. guessing that since these are for the holiday special and they're all supposed to be ice that it's going to be in a cold place it's 
pretty profound, wasn't it? Yeah. Some place below freezing. I'm kind of I'm interested to see if the uh the haunt Halloween special is pretty good and then thing. Um the Western special with Mima the Peter of the so to speak. The Root and Tootin special. That was a lot of fun. It was uh there's rootin' and tootin' and shootin', just like it promised in the title. That was cool. So this one, I know they've been working on it really hard, Alexis and, and Nikki, in terms of designing and planning it. It's been taking a lot of time, so I'm hoping that people will watch it and enjoy it when it does, uh, when it does stream. And I'm not sure exactly when that is yet, but I'm sure that it is probably somewhere on social media or will be soon so people won't miss it. It's holding up pretty well. Doesn't seem to be settling out. That orbital mixer thing that we bought really does a good job with these paints. I mean, uh, they have this tendency for the pigments to settle out and it's very hard to get it just by shaking it by hand. Um, some of these, like this bottle of Tamiya, you know, you can get a stir stick into it and stir it from the bottom, which is better than just shaking it, but the Viejo paints come in these uh, squeeze bottles. The tip that you... you uh, squeeze out a couple drops at a time, which is fine for the detail work, but a little harder to use for this kind of thing. And you can't get into them and stir them, and if the pigment separates, it, you know, you can use up the better part of 20 minutes just baking paint. Okay, well, I'm going to show you those. Those um, are okay. Especially on camera, I think they, the the shadows and nooks and crannies and things look pretty good. And there's like little cracks and crevices and stuff, so that should be pretty decent. If I don't mess it up too much when I uh, try to paint blue onto it. So this is a smaller one. There's two smaller pieces, and we get these done too. And then there's a bunch of like stalac. Stalagmites, stalagmites that uh, are going to be like icicles that have formed from water dripping, upside down icicles, which actually form in caves. We got to see that once. It was pretty cool. It was a cave where there was water that was dripping down from the top, and during the winter it's cold, you know, enough in the cave. The, the water just freezes when it hits, and so it formed these ice stalagmites. And that's what I will be making white when I am done with this one and the other smaller one. And it looks like at some point. We're probably going to need to buy another jar of white paint. We had hardly used any of this paint. Because um, we don't paint things white very often. Not even base coats. But this is this is going to use the better part of like two-thirds of this jar. So that's the update on the paint volume situation. You know, what's kind of nice about things like this is that, you know, it's hard to get things 
even on them because of the surface, the paint kind of spreads thin in a spot or puddles in another, is that it actually looks better that way. Okay. So is that one? Pretty good. I haven't gotten too much paint on my hands yet. Um hmm. I guess I can just do it that way. Just looking down at the the work surface here. This is a, a workbench that actually my dad built a long time ago, so it's kind of a family heirloom kind of thing. And it was painted this light bluish gray kind of color. And we've been using it for model building and school projects and things, and it just got covered with little splotches of paint all over the place. It was it was really kind of a mess and so when we started doing the show, or actually a little bit after we already started, it was like, well, you know, that doesn't look that good on camera. Let's get a decent color that's a good background. And uh, we, we painted the whole top of it this really nice gray color. And as you can see, um, it has accumulated the same sort of uh, effect that it had before. It doesn't take very long to basically recoat it with all sorts of splotches and things. So at some point, I don't know, we'll either let it uh, stay this way because it's, you know, it has good character, or more likely we'll at some point clean off the whole top of it, wipe it down, get out the roller, and repaint the whole thing in this gray again. Start, start anew. Maybe that'll be like an annual event, is the repainting of the work surface. Well, holding it this way seemed like a good idea at the time, and it was just fine until I needed to get to this yeah I can't even keep it on camera there the last bit take it and add it to the pile now what I've got this one's broken. I don't know if they're going to want that or not. Uh, I'll paint it anyway. Because that we've got... Let me show you these. They're all... Stalagmites. There's... Um, a lot of them. The first task is going to be, and how do I hold on to them while I'm painting them? I think, why not? I'll use this thing. Sticky tag on, just stick it onto it. Oh, that's the fireplace I did. This was the last thing I did before the uh, before the vacation trip. As I made this fireplace, just a little set piece. Yeah, you know, it came out okay. You can see I did okay with all the, you know, where the smoke was and stuff, but that, that's coming. And what I'm hoping will happen, but it probably won't because it goes pretty quickly, is paint one on here, 
Let's see. Some of these are big. They got like five things on them. And then uh, I'll paint the next one, and then hopefully this is dry enough, I'll be able to take it off. I remember before I left, I said, um, it looks like we need to replace the sticky tack, this yellow orange stuff, because it's getting covered with paint, and uh, we didn't, and now it's going to get a bunch of white paint on it, too. There is the replacement orange tacky stuff. So after this, it probably really does need to be replaced. So some of these were done before. They were rocks, they were real stalagmites, and then kind of dribbled down on like a white color. But this is going to be maybe kind of the opposite. It's going to be highlighted in, in like blue. It's like little blue dribbles. These are a little easy to miss spots on these things. These, things, these handles are really nice because you can just rotate them all over the place. So, no one gets set aside, and I'll pull this one out. And uh, turn this one white. And all the other one hopefully dries off enough so that I can pick it up when this is done. Stick another one on there and paint it while this one dries. Now we'll see how this goes. Um, Nikki is really good at you know, shading and highlighting. You know, does things like dry brushing and stuff that I am not nearly as good at, but hopefully I am good enough for icebergs. Let's we'll see how those turn out. Even though they're so much smaller, these are not terribly much easier to paint than the big ones, just because of all these little nooks and crannies and internal spaces. Hard to see, hard to reach, easy to miss. So they're taking a little longer than I thought they would, but that's okay. Um, yeah, as long as I've got enough of this white paint in the jar here to get them done. Even if even if I have to use a different white or like highlights later, that would be okay. And I want the the base coats to be uniform. That's uh, that's what I'm working on here.
Like, uh, I got almost all of it now. We'll set this one aside. And... Only it's slightly messy. I'm going to do another one of these big fibers. Yeah, five and a bunch of little threes. And then this one that's kind of broken off. Do about that. Okay, so I'm going to start by getting down into these spaces down here. So yesterday was a travel day. You can go like three or four hundred nautical miles or something in twelve hours on a ship. And you would think, you know, getting getting from like New York to Grand Rapids, which is well, probably not much further than that. You should be able to do that in less time, but it was a long and arduous day because you get off the ship and get your bags, and that's not too bad. That was okay. You get through customs, which I don't know for some reason someone took pity on us and said, "Oh, go to go to this line, which was like ten percent as long as the one next to it." Felt a little privilege there. That was nice, though. So we got through there. And then uh, had to go to Newark Airport, which turns out to be like on the other side of the world from where the ship docked. I just think the ship docked in Brooklyn. Um, so I had to go through a tunnel from Brooklyn to Manhattan, across the lower part of Manhattan. You know, near Wall Street and that kind of thing, and then uh, through another tunnel into New Jersey, and then forever, for some reason, through New Jersey, Jersey City, and things to Newark, and then the airport was let's just let's just say it's not luxurious. We had this really, really mediocre but very expensive sandwich for lunch. Um, you weren't allowed to sit at the tables because they were like reserved for sit-down customers. I don't know why someone needed to sit down and be served the sub sandwich, but I guess they had like a bar or something. And of course, nobody was there sitting. Anyway, just complaining. The airport was really kind of a pain, and then the flight was delayed. And uh, anyway, um. It's a whole lot nicer traveling on a ship than it is traveling by plane. Let's put it that way. Oh yeah, and watch out for the the cabbies in New York. They'll uh... anyway. Let's just say that we were kind of ripped off right off the bat. Okay, so there's that one. And there, that looks really weird from the top, doesn't it? Oops. Magnets and that's coming along okay. Uh, there's one more of these things with five on it, so let's just do that. Yeah, so it cost. I mean, the, it cost almost as much to take a cab 
from the dock to Newark Airport as it would have cost for like an economy seat for one to fly from New York to Grand Rapids. And the, he was charging us like initially almost a hundred dollars more than it should have cost. You know, they get you in the cab, start driving away. Don't turn on the meter. No, don't do that. And then when you're about like a half a mile away in the middle of this industrial dock area, oh, by the way, it's going to cost so much money because it's all the way in New Jersey. And then there's tolls, and the tolls are expensive, and they keep getting higher. Even, even as we speak, they're getting more expensive, and on and on and on. Anyway, my wife did an excellent job of uh, calling him in on it. And uh, ended up only spending like $50 more than it should have. But yeah, it, it, uh, let's just say the time on board was way better than the time not on board. So there's this ad at the airport. They, you know, they always have these ads like, billboard size kinds of things saying that it was let's see and they put it if you took a helicopter this is just for one person I mean if there was more than one it would cost more but for one person it was $55 cheaper to get on a helicopter to fly from Newark, Newark Airport to wherever this thing lands on some rooftop in Manhattan than it would be to take a cab. And instead of taking like 45 minutes, it would only take five minutes. So seriously, you're in a place where it's cheaper to buy a ticket for a helicopter ride to land on a rooftop in Manhattan than it is to take a cab from the airport. I don't know if that was true or not, but based on what this guy was trying to charge us, um, for one person, it actually would have been cheaper. You know, you know, for two or more, you'd have to pay that this, the ticket price for each person, so it wouldn't be, but yeah, there. Quite a contrast to Europe, where even people where people complain about the trains all the time. They complain that the trains are becoming unreliable and they're late and that sort of thing. And there's delays um, in many of the places in Europe where we visited. Uh, you, you can just take trains at a reasonable price to get almost anywhere, and they run frequently. Yeah, they're pretty comfortable. There isn't any food on them, usually, and if there is, it's terrible. But that's not terribly much different than being on a plane either, is it? Anyway, yeah, the, 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 even though compared to what people want it to be in Europe, you know, they think that their trains aren't very good at all compared to almost every other way of getting around, especially here in the States, it's a pretty nice deal. So we took we took train from Amsterdam to Berlin and from Berlin to Hamburg. And the day trip, just, I mean, you can do that. You just get on the train, go to Dresden, spend a day in Dresden, and uh, come back that evening.
the uh, Justin was where the, the notorious fire bombing happened. Um, they revised the figures now. Initially, they said that like 110,000 people or so were killed in the fire bombing, but now they think it was only like 30 or 40,000. Still, it was just all part of our effort to assist the uh, Soviet army in their march through Germany. It's like, well, if the cities are all bombed out, they don't have to uh, fight so hard to get through them. And I guess that was the case. Okay, so it looks like this one is getting... That one's not too bad. We might go over these and touch them up again, I'm not sure. Or we might just wait to deal with it if there's like, spots missing or something with the highlights and the uh, in the uh, overcoat touch-up. Basically, some I can't remember who it is, but uh, some family with too much money and time on their hands decided that they were going to collect like everything of everything. So they they built this place. It was basically a house museum, um, and each room was filled with amazing artifacts. There was a whole room full like rock crystal carvings, bowls, and ewers and things. Rock crystal is uh, clear quartz. And it's really kind of hard to work with, but apparently the artisans are really good. So this entire room, it's like 15 by 20 foot room. It's huge. And there's another room full of silver. There's silver room. And then next to it was the gilt silver room, which was silver with gilding on it. There was one full of ivory artifacts. Yeah, which at the time, you know, it happened, but uh, they're still preserved and the, the carving skills were really pretty incredible. A really big room just full of gemstones. Rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and diamonds. Much much of it actually survived the bombing. Uh, I think there were eight rooms, and three of them facing the courtyard uh, were destroyed. Then they've been stored. A lot of the stuff that was in them had been been moved and put into hiding before that. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the rooms were actually still kind of in their original condition. Anyway, it was really a fascinating place. And really high security. You had to go through this room where basically you were scanned two people at a time because somehow or other, despite the really high security, um, some people managed to break in a couple of years ago and steal some of their diamond jewelry, kind of priceless artifacts. Um, their historical value probably more than their numerical value. They still haven't recovered them. They don't know how they got in. Got away. They think, of course, that there was some sort of inside assistance, as you would expect with something like that. I mean, you have to know what all the security stuff is in order to bypass it. But uh, yeah, anyway, kind of like a little bit though, like closing the barn door after the horses are gone kind of situation, but nonetheless, you know, 
There were some pretty, ex pretty wonderful things in there. So I think that they were saying, you know, in most of the rooms, what we were seeing was just a fraction, sometimes like a, a quarter or a third as much as was there originally even. That over time some of these things were were lost, you know, lots of wars and things going on, fire bombings, other kinds of disruptions. But even at that volume, the, the collection is pretty stunning. Anyway, yeah, I mean, you can do that and just go to Berlin, don't have to rent a car or anything. Things are easy to get around in the cities. Usually the public transportation is good. All sorts of buses and trams and local trains and in, inner, inner city and intra-city trains. Okay, I'll let this one dry. That's a bit of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's getting to be quite a pile of stuff. I've got one full one left, and then the broken one. And then uh, what we'll do is attempt to find a piece of this paperboard. It's like basically they're like five by eight pile card kinds of things. So they're not absorptive, so it's better to paint on than most paper. And we're going to paint a bunch of white on it. And then uh, practice, test out blue highlight coloring. One, do this one too. It's interesting, like that, you know, if you wanted to, if printed these off and you could make them like these black smokers kinds of things that are in the mid-ocean ridge and so you could break it off and then get some cotton and put a little gray paint on the cotton and have it come up like a little smoke right out of the right out of the hole that'd be kind of cool I could even paint the inside of it red and have it be like a lava spur. Little streams of lava come out. Just something to do with your broken stalactites. 
Okay. Um, getting pretty close to the end of the undercoat. Used up, yeah, about two thirds of the bottle. There's still in luck for like highlights and things later. If we decide to use this white. Oh, about to be iceberg things that we'll be working on soon. But what I'm going to do next is uh, try to clean this brush out a little bit. And then I'm going to get some blue colors. I'm going to look at my color chart and see which blues look. Yeah, that got gummed up. Would look good even though they're pretty saturated sometimes. It might look good if they were painted over again with a pearlescent or other white color. So it'd be like uh, white with some blue on it with some white on it. But we need to experiment with that. To see how that would work. What we've got is this light blue. It's also just kind of a blue color. We've got a blue-gray wash. It might be kind of an interesting sort of thing. Let me get this out here. Notebook here full of uh, colors. Like this is the white pearlescent here. Basically, it's white and shiny, and that might look kind of good as a glaze on top of things. Let's see. There's also this green blue, uh, which is kind of a cool color. That might be a good highlight with the night with white on top of that. So that's worth trying. Um, The turquoise is probably a decent color. I think that would be all right to try. The blue-green might be okay. So I'm going to try those two. The other ones I've got is this kind of, it's kind of light blue. It's kind of grayish though, which might not be what we're going for. And then there's this, this plain blue, but we'll see how they look. I mean, the light blue might look okay if it's got a, a a white wash over it. What did I say? Turquoise, blue green. If I'm gonna use blue, I'll just use this. Yeah, light blue. And then the uh, pearlescent colors. Get up. Let's get out the uh, stand up and look for these blues. There's aquamarine, and blue green, blue green. Ooh, play with that. I didn't think it looked good on the chart, but you never know.
Play with these colors. These will be our. Here, I'll move them over. These will be our play with um, on the white to see what they look like, kind of things. And then I need to get the. Uh, I'm going to use the white and the green blue. Just play with those and see. So I'm going to be playing with like layering because these are kind of opaque colors and we don't want the ice to look opaque. We want it to look kind of translucent. So Nikki said that probably the way that would work is um, a couple of different ways. One is to dry brush it on really lightly. Another is to put it on, you know, kind of moderately and then dry brush like a white over it again. So what we might be doing with this is, um, depending on how it looks, highlighting blue, different blue colors onto some of these things like maybe even layering them, we'll see. You know, kind of mixing a band of blue or something, maybe a couple different colors of it. Um, and then overpainting it again with uh, the white or the pearlescent white. But that's, that's why we want to practice because, you know, we've got this mass of whiteness base coated and we don't want to have to uh, start all over again so I need if I can find them is a bunch of those uh, some looks like white paper non-absorbent white paper to uh, practice on and I don't see any here so what I'm going to do a little bit early is I'm going to take a really short break to find the substrate for the testing. It won't be very long. I'm just searching for paper, basically. Um, maybe get a little more coffee, and then we come back, and we are going to experiment with different ways of making this stuff look really icy. Um, yeah, real quick search for material break. I will be back in uh, something like five or ten minutes.
Okay, well, what I did was I found these, like four by six cards, and what I'm going to do with them is uh, stir this paint up a little bit. Whoa. Is put a whole bunch of this white paint on it so that the undercoat that I'm working with is the same, more or less, as. Um, it's more thick and close. I'm going to open this up again and uh, be using more of this. And I'm going to paint a fairly large area because I want to try a bunch of different colors and things. You know, I could, you know, theoretically just put the colors onto the white cardboard, but it, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't necessarily be the same. So I'm just painting, spreading some paint. This is going to go down Yeah, it'll dry quickly. And then we can try all you know, sorts of different things and see how it looks um, before I start putting it on the models themselves. See the white against the white, but again, just want to make sure the base coat is similar to, if not identical, to the one that are on the iceberg things. should also do is get like a pencil or something um, so that I can label the, the color that I'm using because there's nothing better than saying oh that looks just right I wonder which one it was which is almost certain to happen okay well you know it's not perfect but just wanted to get the base coat, like I said, more or less like. But I think what I'm going to do is like, um, let's do verticals, okay? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, nine different options here. Is if I do a space about this big. Get four of them, maybe five on a... No, these are overcoats. No, this is an undercoat. So I've got eight. So if I do four colors on each one... Eh, don't even have to do that. I miscounted. I'm really not good at counting here today. Seven. I have seven options. So I could do, like, four on each one. And what I'll do is I can put solid color and then dry brush in each vertical. And then um, you like half and half, and then do um, different experiments with overcoats with either a white or the uh, fluorescent white, fluorescent silver color. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just what we're going to do, is just try a whole bunch of them. And just see how they turn out. Really don't know where this is going to go. Let's see, some of these are Vallejo paints so that I need. These handy little things. We had one that was well used. I guess we'll get a new one out. Ooh. 
Okay. Um. Yeah, I can't stop. So let's on this one, let's do some of the Viejo colors here. We're going to do um, turquoise. Totally worthless. Doesn't work either. This is terrible. The want of a pen, I can't get going here. Okay, well, what about this? The green, old, really ancient green thing. Let's see if this works. Yes. So I'm going to do turquoise. I'm going to do emerald. I'm going to do blue green. And I'm going to do this um, blue gray wash. And like I said, I'm going to just put my solid colors in dry brush. And then do it. Get started here. Turquoise. Turquoise is a very nice color, but it's also kind of dramatically opaque. Maybe dry brushing doesn't look all that good. It might be okay, you know, as a highlight kind of thing. Can you just catch the peaks of things? Anyway, that's kind of a pretty color. And we'll see how this looks. Then we will try emerald. Be way too green. It's a really pretty color, but I'm not sure it's going to work for ice.
picture here. I hope it looks different on yours because what I'm seeing, the colors have nothing at all to do with the colors that I'm looking at. Um, blue green. This might work okay. It's blue green. Let's see how it looks. Even be better than the turquoise, or could use this and then um, you know use both colors. Use the turquoise to get kind of a similar color pattern, uh, but a little darker. I'm thinking this one, this one's working really nice. This is a good color. And then the turquoise could be like, like deeper, darker little recesses. It could kind of put it in some of the crevices or something. And then I was going to just try this wash. The only, the only thing about the wash is that it's already kind of semi-transparent, but I think it's, I think it's going to be just way too dark. You know, it doesn't look, it just looks dirty against the light. You know, and you could use it as a wash on one of these other colors, maybe, but it would just be. I don't think that's a success. <laughs> you know, um, let's pull out the other one here. And what we've got left is light blue. Blue, butter, and um, green, blue. Yeah, let's start with uh, light blue. I had hope for this, but I think it's going to be too gray. If it can get opened, obviously the paint has sealed itself shut. Okay. You know, the downside of some of these to me is, is that uh, the paint gets into the bottle cap and then it uh, seals it shut, which is just fine for sealing paint. No, so, oh, you are light blue.
yeah see that's that's what i was afraid of is this just coming out gray and what we want is a, like a brighter color so this is going to be a no Pretty uh, wiping cloth here. See, that's what we want it to look like, like that. This is just plain blue, which is also a nice color, but probably going to be too dark. Open. These paints are. Let's see how this looks with a wash. It might, I mean, it might be surprising. Um, you know, if it's got white highlights on it, but I'm thinking that it's just way too deep a blue for what we're trying to get here. And then we're going to try this uh, pearlescent blue, which is also pretty, may or may not work. Right off here, tiny bit there. Stuff is really, it's weird paint. It's uh, simultaneously really thick, and it's very thick paint. Um, and also transparent. And that's it's actually really a quite nice color. It might be effective. It's um, it's not even, and it doesn't go on evenly, but that might be the kind of effect we're going for. So that's that's worth keeping in mind. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to take each of these patches, and I'm going to highlight in white, pearlescent white, and just leave it. We're going to see how they look when I do that. So it's basically going to be a dry brush kind of thing. And there's only four, four of these colors are even worth trying. Um, the turquoise, the blue-green, the, the plain blue, 
and the fluorescent green blue. Start with the pearlescent. Do this in, I guess, two different, well, we'll see. Thinking I, I might want to see what it looks like putting, a, you know, just a, like a regular code over it. Interesting, it's direction. You know, if you go like this way, all you can see is the shininess of it, and then you bring it back and the color deepens, which might be kind of an interesting effect if the camera kind of moves around. I don't know. It's colors. Uh, that white pearlescent on the blue pearlescent is actually, it's kind of cool actually. Hmm. Okay, well, let's try it with just a white dry brush if I can, if I can even figure out how to pull that off. You know, you know, I think we're narrowing it down. To be honest, this is the, surprisingly, the one I'm liking best is actually the blue pearlescent with the white dry brush highlights because the it tones down the shininess of it, um, but brings the white back out. You know, so what I think I'm going to do, 
is I'm going to try it on. I'm going to try it out. I don't know. We'll, we'll just see. I'm going to try it on here. The worst that can come of this is that you um, need to repaint it some. Okay, so what I'm doing is just sort of catching the highlights here. Trying to get in, you know, a few spots that are a little darker, like that. In the crevice a little bit. And what I'm going to do is, um, it's pretty shiny, is use the white paint just brushing over it again to not cover the color at all. I don't want to cover the color. I just want to tone it down a little bit so it's not quite as shiny. It's not quite as intense. And then I'm going to take it upstairs on a regular break and um, get an opinion about how it looks. Okay. I'll let that sit for just a bit. that and these other colors are really pretty but i'm not sure they would i'm not sure it would work as well but we'll see what they think um what i might do is i'm just going to try this since i'm messing with it i can repaint this a little bit because so i'm going to try some with the blue green here just to get an opinion of how it looks. This doesn't turn out. We will just repaint the whole thing.
gluing is just sort of dry brushing some white over the blue. Tone it down just a little bit. Leave a few spots that are bright and a few spots that aren't. Now I do the same thing here on this uh, blue green. Two. Get an opinion. And actually, the last thing I'm going to do, oh, I have this out, is um, right at the top there, since I've got this, this side is a uh, test site anyway. So I'm going to just take some of this pearlescent paint and use it to highlight white on white. This is this is a test thing here. Yeah, and I have to give an opinion too about the layering on of the color, you know, about where they want it. I'm gonna guess that actually this is this blue green with maybe the pearlescent wash on it. This is really cool. The blue pearlescent, um, but I'm not sure if they want, if they like the color as much. Anyway, we'll find out uh, in a bit. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a little break. And what we're going to do is get an expert opinion from the people who are gonna be using this about what colors I should go with. This will be a little longer break, maybe 10, 10 minutes or so. We'll see you soon.
Okay, so after a great deal of discussion, we decided uh, that the winner is the pearlescent blue with the pearlescent white on top of it. Um, what we're going to try to do, though, is leave the top white kind of like this and then get the blue color kind of coming in the crevasses. Like this is a good spot here. Uh, and here and a little bit toward the bottom um, so that it's kind of white and then streaks down to the blue near the bottom rather than having the blue all the way at the top. So we're going to try to get the blue into the crevasses and the, not the top, not the, the peaks, but the kind of the valleys and then down near the bottom. Um, so what we need to do first, though, is uh, wipe this one out. And then we'll maybe start on something like this. Let's see how it looks. But there was an agreement that that blue actually looks pretty good. Um, so surprise. So we'll see. We'll see how this covers. Uh, probably uh, it's covering pretty well. I think we'll be able to recover it back to its original base coat. A little blue will show through, but. That, that'll probably be okay. We'll just have to, um, you know, it'll just be what it is. Putting this on a little heavier, maybe, just to cover up the uh, paint underneath it. So we're going to be making use of these pearlescent paints. That's good. We got the quantity is actually pretty good in those bottles. And you don't use very much because they're more of a almost like more of a wash than paint in terms of how they're used. So we're just recoating this paint everywhere. It's not being careful because we're trying to be quick, I guess. This is the side that needs to be covered the most because that's the color we're not using. Yeah, the white pearlescent on the white base coat turned out, it looks pretty decent. You know, everybody agreed that that looked uh, icy. Okay, well, we can always put a little more on there later, but that. So what we'll do is clean off the brush again. And I think I'm just going to keep using this brush. Works okay for mostly of what we're doing. Start putting some blue on here and see how it goes. Like here, make sure we get the, the blue into the crevasse area there, into these fractures.
Okay, this brush is too wet, I guess. Too much water in it. You have to use a different brush if this keeps misbehaving. Very like this, you might want down here, might be fairly large amount of the color, definitely in that spot in there, little bits near the top. He's here like a little ice cave kind of thing and underneath that maybe a touch up there It's kind of stippled here and there. A little bit up near the top. But uh, I mean, a little out of there for sure. A little bit underneath there. <clears throat> Beneath here, you know, make it a little darker under there. Pretty decent random blueiness. I'm going to do like one of try one of these big ones now. What I do is definitely try to get it into these crevasses. This area under here, under the thing there, not too much up here, but some in here, in the, in the opening there. You want that kind of a blue color coming down, <clears throat> but not too much at the top, working its way down into these darker areas here.
Yeah. So that, sorry, you can't really see that. I think that, that looks actually pretty good. You know, with the white that on it later. Here, I want to be careful not to get too thick. Down here in this area here. A little bit near the top. Here, yeah, you get some crags in here. I mean, like that needs to be deep blue under there. Going down here. Yeah, so we'll just keep, you know, fluttering around with that. Just a little bit in the valley there. And a little bit more in these these vertical crags. Okay, I think this is coming out okay. Not bad. This one's a little weird. I mean, this is kind of a globby piece of whatever anyway. But uh, I like that. That came out nicely. Let's do the big tall one. Be careful not to get too much on this one. I just want it like in streaks where there would be 
like underneath here for sure, and then over this way. Um, something like this spot here, it'd be like just touches. Like giving a hint of, of this craggly area here. Put some patches in. And trying to basically catch the low spots, the, the darker places there. Maybe quite a bit down here <laughs> where it's uh, kind of knobby looking, especially on the underneath part and kind of going up into a few areas like that. Horizontal kind of look here. With this being so tall, I think we want it to be fairly dark at the bottom just to give it more weight, otherwise it'll look weird. Okay, this one, this one is really interesting. I think I'm going to put you know, a fair amount of it in the crevasses here, and especially on this face. This face looks like it's fractured and fragmented. And all these deep areas need to be kind of colored in.
I don't want the, the, the peaks to be whiter, but I can catch those when I put the, the white glaze on. Let me put a blue underneath here. Yeah, I think that, that turned out okay. On each side, um, decidedly less. Okay, I'm going to be just trying to get into some of the deeper areas, like a blue river coming down here. Not very much, just kind of in the shadows, maybe. In the gully. Got this one that we painted.
<clears throat> now these things you do the same thing. We're going to um, just put color down here to buy. Mainly, we're going to use the um, fluorescent wash I mean, to make them look shiny. Yeah, I mean, that that's kind of the look. I just want some blue on it. Not, not new. The horizontal ribbing makes it hard to um, get the color decent. It is what it is, so we'll just keep doing that. It's off camera. There we go. Kept moving around and moved in the wrong direction there. He is having fun chasing something upstairs. I'm thinking these look better. It's very much dark down in the crevasses there. Let me make sure that 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 happens a little bit more on these things. I really like this one. This one came out without much color.
means like hide and seek. I'll run and you catch me. Yeah, if Nikki were doing these, they'd be like incredibly beautiful, realistic, ice looking. I'm just making smudges. But, you know, they will be icy looking in time for the show. That will be recorded relatively soon. <clears throat> There's a bunch more of them. There's some. Weird noises upstairs, but you can't hear it. So. So what I'm going to do is uh, finish this and then look around to see what they look really scabby and maybe do a little touching up, knowing that I can put white coat over it. like a super realistic natural look here. But, you know, we don't want it to look too goofy. These actually don't, you know, they actually don't look too terribly bad, you know. Now that I'm looking at them, other than that, the horizontal ridging, as I said, makes it difficult. So what I think I'm going to do now <coughs> is, um, this one just isn't working that one. What needs to be just spread out a little bit from the crevasse area there. Otherwise, it looks really odd. Okay, that helped just that little bit. I like this one, this, this eggy faced one. I think that's really, this one's really cool. Mm, 
Yeah, I'm just going to go over them a little bit. I've got a little bit of paint left. Uh, some of this blue and see if there's any spots that, you know, I just say and calling out for more blue paint. And then I'm going to get the uh, the white pearlescent and catch basically the whole surface. I mean, it looks really good, the white on the white. It turns out pretty decent. I see. So I'm going to start playing with this pretty soon. And yeah, I'll do the white. Hold on, so this is still good. There's still a lot of it left there from the test. So I'll start with that. Um, this might have been the first one I did. So let's, let's start with this. So what we're doing is basically just taking this and just rubbing it all over um just adding highlights and shininess to uh various and sundry places and whitening up the the, the upper spots Just adds kind of a gloss to everything. It's kind of cool. Makes the some of the peaks whiter, you know, where it, where it should be, leaving the color down underneath. It has a really interesting glossiness to um, to the tripods. And kind of shiny. Gives me a chance to, you know, take some of the spots that are maybe bluer than they should be. Make them a little whiter again. Yeah, it's kind of hard to remember. I mean, it's kind of hard to see, um, but there is a good deal more shininess to the surface. You know, Fairly in obtrusive way. Might be going through a fair amount of this white, especially as I try to, you know, whiten up some of the peaks where I don't want it to be quite so blue. Make a spot there, a spot there. Just use this as the opportunity to, to shape the color a little bit from what it was.
you know, the places here where I just want a little bit of an undertone of blue. Let's cover it over a little bit. Anyway, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a weird looking piece. It's shaped oddly, but um, I think it looks okay. What we're going to do is mix this up again. And squeeze a bunch out. There, which this one's kind of dry. There's a lot of surface area here, so I'm going to be playing with this quite a bit. I'm going to basically I want to get pearlescent on the top and catch all the peaks. And then bring it down and like here see this spot here i want to kind of white out the peak there but leave the dark blue underneath kind of like that okay so there and there again so it's just shaping kind of shaping the blue toning it down where it doesn't need to be as much. And I'm highlighting all the peaks with this pearlescent color. Um, all through here. So too much blue there, so I can put some white on that and Kind of make it go away a little bit. Tone that down up there. Yeah, I just need to um, go all around this since it's big. It probably will be pretty easy to just like totally miss spots. So I'm going to try to do this side first, all the way up to the top. Take the blue and then turn it around. And um, see, I want that to stay dark under there, but kind of highlight it. And up here, it doesn't need to be quite as blue in here. And capture that, and then these peaks up here. And then I'll go to the other side. And I want to make sure I get this side kind of done the way I'd like it to be. So here I can highlight that and tone this little bit down here. Get that color a little bit there. You don't want that to be quite so blue up there, but underneath I do. Just the white spots here. I like that. Okay, I kind of like that. I like that little ridge. <clears throat> and move around here. This is real gloovy here. I don't, I don't know what. We're just going to kind of stipple this whole area. I mean, it's just, it's a weird kind of fractured area. And basically what we want to do is keep some of the color in the low spots and highlight it by whitening the, the tops of the ridges, I think. I think. That's about the best we can do with that. The pearlescent on the light, really, really kind of nice. 
You can't really see the contrast too much on camera, I guess, but um, <clears throat> really, really is much nicer where the, the pearlescent is on the light. Okay, well, this is the texture here is really craggy. So what I want to do is basically, again, I want to catch the ridges to highlight the, the vein of blue, the dark blue. <laughs> that runs through there. <clears throat> I just sort of highlight this, the high spots. This area here, I'm just going to stipple. It's just a flat area. Here, there's Maybe a little too much blue there, so tone that down. <clears throat> Stay underneath. If not, you want it shiny up on the peak there. So make sure that that's shiny and down into the valley here. I think this is this this piece is really I like this piece a lot. <clears throat> Put texture on it in interesting places too, so there's a lot to work with. Yeah, so this this is looking okay. It's trying to get some spots that look like, you know, just like a brush mark as opposed to the thing that I want, like right there. Yeah, it helps disguise the fact. Here. Okay. So that looks that looks pretty good. So we got two of them then. Um this one is like my least favorite thing. So let's do this next. Basically, uh just gonna make this a whole shiny thing and just touch up some of the high spots like here on this ridge but there isn't there isn't too much definition to this so we'll just uh i'll leave it as it is and catch a few spots here and there and i can add or subtract a little bit of something to make it look a little better i mean that's a nice little crevasse there This is kind of a mess here. Let's see what we can do with it.
keep rotating it. And hopefully not miss too many spots. And try to do something, you know, just to highlight a lot of the high spots here, I think, is all about all we can do. It's kind of knobby looking. So we might as well take advantage of that. Let's bring out the color a little bit there. Deal with this abrupt edge there. Getting my hand to be a mess there. I think basically I'm just trying to hit the high spots so that the color stays down in the low spots. I'm trying to mess up the edges where it looks too artificial. Like here, that's that's not good there. So put a bunch of white paint on that and hopefully break up the edge some. Some new spots here. Like that. I mean that helped quite a bit just doing that. Yeah, we'll get some more paint out. <laughs> it's okay to have a little bit of blue on the top, but that was more than enough. And again, um, basically, I'm just trying to get things that look too much like a brush mark to not look quite so much like a brush mark. And it's improving. It's getting to be okay. I think that'll be, that's adequate. I mean, it looks icy, kind of matter warning. Let's do this little one, this square one. See what we can do with this. This one definitely, we want it really shiny on the top. And then uh, there's a lot of crevasses and blue, so I'm not going to do too much to cover that. What I am going to do, though, is uh, do one side at a time. Otherwise, I will lose track of where I was. 
And what I'm doing is, like on before, try to catch the high points and making them whiter and leaving the color more underneath. And I think it doesn't take too much, but it kind of makes a difference. I'm going to leave some really deep spots in a few spots. And cover up a couple and some other spots. So I'll rotate it this way. And that peak looks so much better with the chlorosana, with the pearlescent. Um, here, I just, like you said, just sort of plunk it on. And I think that's what I'll do there. But I want to catch these high spots. Yeah, that actually, that looks much better. So I did this side, I think, yeah. There's a working area there. And then I need to somehow, uh, I can do this side. Same thing, move this out a little bit, is lighten up the high spots, kind of blur the edges where they are too brush marky, cover up some spots that really should have very little color on them. And then I have left myself this side, <clears throat> which I can't you know, just grab it and make a mess of it, I guess. No other way to get to it. <clears throat> but I need some work that here. I mean, it's kind of a cool spot, but just kind of out of place. So I'm going to cover a good deal of that. Up. <clears throat> you define them, redefine them, and then save this area here by hitting the high spots. <clears throat> It's just going to be that, <clears throat> kind of break it up. Let's see if I can... Okay, well, I think this is better now. It looks way better on the top, but it's shiny. There we go. And that needed to be toned down some. And it's a nice kind of bluish corner, but there. Okay, well, without getting too carried away, <laughs> we're going to call that one good. the brush because it's getting all thick with that so with that and my hand and um i've got one this big one here and then i'm going to try to do something with this guy this one's a little bit more challenging it looks like um i'm going to start on this face 
And it looks like I need to do a fair amount more color contouring kind of thing on this. Is it doesn't, I don't like the way it looks. What you want to do is get rid of the brushy look. Here, make this a little lighter. I like the blue inside there, but it came up a little too high otherwise. <clears throat> And here, it's just a matter of uh, kind of softening the triangular shape of that. So, I'm going to hold a lot of this up here. This is a big craggly bit on the top that needs to look nice and shiny. <clears throat> that a little bit later. A little bit of blue there. I think that's good. Kind of tone some of these spots down um, and on the edge. Make sure that that's whiter. <clears throat> Look down under here and up here. Just want kind of a slight undertone of blue here, not very much. So we'll put a fair amount of white on that. And I want that to be kind of dark there. Now that looks okay. Get the high spots here. <clears throat> this just kind of fades away into a generic little muddle of blue and, and white. So that's okay. <laughs> this would be a nice blue color, but I need to mess up the edges a little bit and then leave it in a nice dark blue spot under here. Just highlight the areas around it. Right, I'm talking like I know what I'm doing, right? Yeah, I think I kind of like that. That came out okay. Let's see what we can do with the other side. This is a nice raggly kind of. Uh, let's see what I can do with my fingers and. is actually going to show up <clears throat> if the camera catches it. So take care of that. What I want to do on this side is leave a lot of blue. And basically, I'm going to use the white <clears throat> to just kind of hit the high points so that the blue is more under and the white is more on top. So I'm not putting a lot of white on this, except, you know, in a few places where basically the blue brush just brushed 
as I was reaching in. <clears throat> And highlighting the points basically. And I'm going to need a little more of this for lesson stuff. Capture the tops of these peaks for sure. I think they'll be happy with this one. I'm sitting there. I think this is coming out pretty nicely. Got these pearlescent paints basically for one model, Storm Grimming. And we've used them in a few places and they, you know, they just, they do a nice job sometimes when you want something shiny, like an eagle wing, highlighting a metallic or something. Okay. So this is, this looks okay, I think. Maybe, maybe fix this here. And notice that it's kind of out of the way, but it's, yeah, the blue doesn't climb up the side of the inside quite like that. Let's tone that down a bit. We break up that edge a bit. Um, okay, now what I've got left are these stalagmite things. And I don't know what it's going to turn out. Oh, look at that. There's two of them I didn't get any blue on. They were sitting on the handle thing. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to blue those up first. They just got missed. <clears throat> What we're going to count on here is that by a significant application of the uh, pearlescent white, these will turn out to look okay. Find out how that goes, but as it is, I have I thought there were more of them when I did this, but as it is, I have to say I'm really I don't know. I think it's the, the horizontal ribbing or something that makes it difficult. But, you know, it's the impression it gives on camera that's more the most important thing. And um, we'll see what kind of impression it gives after we put the white pearlescent all over them. And make them kind of shiny. If they're shiny... You know, they might look okay. And which one did I just do that one? We need to blue this thing.
Well, these just have to kind of sit around and give the impression of being uh, pinnacles of ice. And I'm hoping that's the impression that they actually give once I make them shiny. Soft too. And we're going to do the same thing we did before is paint one and then set that aside and let it dry and then paint another one. So we're going to put a lot of this pearlescent paint on it because um, they look kind of not so good otherwise but once they're yeah you know once they're shiny the shininess really really helps and it uh cut kind of blends the blue a little bit i mean you can see the difference it's just it's it's working okay i like that but the shininess definitely is uh is cool it makes it look good They're on these to pay attention to what has been painted and what hasn't. You would think that would be obvious, but that apparently isn't. What, what, what happens? It just, uh, yeah. Suddenly, it goes from, this is pretty stupid and goofy looking, to this is not too bad. Thank you, pearlescent white paint. Okay, so let's do a compare and contrast. This is the one with shiny paint on it. This is the one without it. Okay, and you can just see how much, yeah, I mean, it really, it really works okay. <clears throat> it looks like you can't really have too much of this white on it. It kind of puts the blue underneath, kind of blurs all the edges, makes it look really icy, which is the point. Okay, I think we have salvaged the uh, icicles. I'll do the same, except I'm going to pay attention to which of these I am painting so that I don't miss any. <clears throat> Start with the big one here. You know, and work my way around. It looks like counterclockwise because that's the next one up. This is working okay. I've got like about 15 minutes left. That's about as much time as it'll probably take to finish these off. Yeah, I mean, they went from being kind of globby looking to they look really kind of icy. So it's, uh, this is working okay.
Do one of these little ones next. <laughs> Big one here. You know, the whole secret is just to get a whole lot of this nice pearlescent white wash on it. Not wash, but paint. And spread it around. And, um, yeah. You can still see the blue, and it comes through okay, but it's kind of like a tone as opposed to something that blares out. Mm. You want it? When we first, <laughs> first got these pearlescents, we were kind of disappointed that the colors were almost transparent. It was almost like a wash rather than a paint. You don't cover very well, so to speak. Um, but it's actually made them quite useful for something like this, where you want, you want a gloss look, but not, and to cover some of the color to, you know, to tone it down some, but not not disappear it. We've actually been using them as a, more like a wash or a texture paint than as a paint in and of themselves. And that has been okay. Okay. You're like there where there was just way too much blue paint, you know, I mean, just didn't look good. It was just like globbed on kind of in a way. Um, now it just looks like a shiny spot. Kind of soften the edges of it. Reduce the color a little bit.
you know, so that that was a lucky accident I mean, kind of lucky thing that just trying something and it actually worked. It doesn't always do that. Like when we were first testing the colors, the one that I thought would look best, the uh, turquoise with the silvery wash, just it just didn't work out very well. Um, and this blue that I thought, well, maybe it has possibilities, but it looks too blue. Actually, um, it's a really nice icy color. So this is, yeah, I mean, it tones it down in spots and <clears throat> blurs the edges and uh, makes it look okay. Because it doesn't take a huge amount of care to get it on and make it look good. <clears throat> it feels like the less care I put on it, the sort of the better it turns out. Just in terms of spreading the color around. Like this. I mean, that looked really terrible. Um, scabby looking and things, and all of a sudden it was... Just uh, like a blue, shiny blue undertone. Pretty cool. And the glossiness really makes a difference too. It really helps make it look icy as opposed to just the plain white, which is an icy color, but not an icy kind of um, gloss. So we're almost done with these. I've got two more left after this one. And I'm hoping that Nikki and Alexis are happy with how they turned out because uh, they wanted, they needed these um, pretty soon. So I think they needed them by Friday. Yeah. Got to use the streaming show to do the uh, set pieces for the holiday special that they will be recording soon and showing for the holiday. And it will have dragons in it, I have come to understand, and that should be pretty cool, because what's cooler than dragons? Doesn't look very good now, but maybe it will once it's whitened up with this glossy stuff.
That's okay. You know, one side that looked like way badly colored. Could, came out actually one of the better ones. Kind of live and learn. I could have actually, in some cases, put more of the blue on, not knowing that I could cover it up pretty neatly and blur the edges this way. That. And now there's just uh, one more. Just the right glossy white paint, maybe. Hopefully, there'll be just enough for this. We'll see. Sometimes that works out. You get just enough to do the final bit and not having to squeeze out another drop or so of paint. And that might be the case here, especially since there's a fair amount blobbed onto the brush here. And that this is broken off so it doesn't take nearly as much cover. Okay, so there is that, there are them. This one off, otherwise we're going to forget about it. That in there, these really looking used. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Um, yeah, let me put the camera on here and show you all that. We have got three large, two small icebergs that uh, have turned out to look little icebergy, not bad, not bad, and a whole bunch of those kind of stalactite things. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, the way this turned out, that Nikki and Alexis will like them and that they will show up really well on uh, their, their special show. And let's see, I've got a palette here with different colors. <clears throat> Be experimented with colors. I thought this was going to be the winner. I mean, it doesn't show up well, but it's kind of a pretty color. But uh, the the gloss on the gloss uh, turned out to be the the favorite, so that worked out. <clears throat> I am just going to clean this out of the sink. That's a mess. Um, yeah, what is it? It's like three minutes before closing time, and now we've got. Just in time, uh, the the uh, set pieces that they need for the special, and I'm hoping that everybody has an opportunity to see it when it streams. Um, I'm not sure when that will be exactly, but I'm sure it will be put out on social media so everybody will know. But yeah, um, I'm especially happy that these guys turned out to look. Not awful. When I painted them white and then painted them blue, they were looking awful. But now they look kind of decent. They look icy. They look okay. Yeah, there we are. Um, I think that's it for today. Thank you for joining in on Dyson Dungeons Relaxing Painting. Um, watch social media usually we do this monday wednesdays and fridays from 10 until 2 but i understand that there's a discussion about changing the times 
uh, especially for potential West Coast viewers, because 10 o'clock is like 7 in the morning there, and that's not helpful. Um, so stay tuned. Stay tuned to the social media for potential changes in the schedule of the Relaxing Painting Show. There's a lot of stuff to be done yet, uh, and you might have an opportunity to see that. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, also on Sundays, starting at 2, make sure you tune into our campaign. Uh, it's pretty exciting. We always have uh, either we're shopping or eating or fighting. Um, usually we're either having a really good meal or we're in trouble. So um, you, you get to uh, see one of those two things usually if you tune in. But 2 o'clock on Sundays, the stream of Dice and Dungeons ongoing campaign. And we hope that you can join us for that. Also watch for the restream of the Haunt at Hawthorne Manor, our Halloween special, which will probably become a Halloween tradition because it was just an amazing one-shot campaign. I mean, just absolutely amazing. Uh, the players were exhausted by it. I mean, we just really were and just didn't trust anything anymore it, it it affected us it, i mean it really was extremely well done we were not acting at the at the end we were just really overwhelmed by the scenario that we found ourselves in so please watch that and again thanks for joining and hope to see you again soon bye